Good afternoon. Welcome back to my channel. This 10th day of April, year of our Lord, 2022. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be uh, we're going to be piloting our Mech Titan Mono Blue Mech Titan build today, just like we did yesterday, except in unranked because we were painfully and repeatedly humiliated in in defeat yesterday. So. Our fragile egos cannot handle getting beaten down that bad since we need constant reinforcement and we constantly need to hear and feel how great we are. So we're going to take our deck into unranked and we're going to beat up on lesser powered people so that we can feel better about ourselves. Thank you for joining me once again. And before we get started, I'd like to ask that you hit the like button if you enjoy what you see here. Subscribe if you care to see even more and, and maybe leave a comment if, you know, you have something to say. And even if you don't have something to say, maybe a nice thumbs up emoji in the comments, you know, I'd appreciate that. Um, we've got our deck list here. We're gonna go very quickly through it. I don't think I'm going to stop to explain anything. Feel free to pause your video if you'd like to take a look. And we are going to hop right in to our first game. Alchemy play. I don't know why it wants me to play alchemy. I never have. My immediate plans do not include it. But uh, thanks anyway. Wizards? Who totally cares about me and not money? Love having the reality chip here in this loading screen. We uh, play three of them in this deck here. I've seen a lot of deck lists with two. I had two for a while. I got a third in a pack. I said, eh, you know what, I'll try it because I don't I don't feel like I'm getting it enough games. You know, I'm not really drawing it reliably enough and it gives me such great card advantage. And I've really enjoyed having three of it ever since. Um, you know, my, my, only, um, my only possibility with that is maybe taking it down to two main board, one side, but eh, I'm liking three. Take a look at this hand here. Seems playable. We can do turn one Moon Snare prototype, and then turn two we can drop the uh, Silver Raven and Reckoner Bank Buster. That's cool. It opens us up for a possible turn three Tezzeret, and then if we get that, that would be a possible turn three free draw from Reckoner Bank Buster because Tezzeret's first ability. I say uh, the people who uh, have seen my videos before can probably recite this along with me at this point. Sorry about that, but yep, Tezzeret's first ability. Uh, the first activated ability of an artifact we cast each turn costs two less. That is beautiful. We see another Tesseret right there. I think I'll drop that. We see two black and white lands here. Fun's taking a look at our cards. I think they're just reading them, though. Yeah, didn't really suspect removal there. Okay. What are our choices here? Um, my initial... Um, my initial game plan here, since that's only a 1-1... One, one, if we minus Tezzeret from 4, he gets to 2. That 1-1 one, one will not kill him. Um, we can minus Tezzeret to turn Silver Raven into a 4-4. Ah, four, four. Uh, shoot. I won't be able to uh, get a free draw out of Bank Buster. Alright. This makes things immediately slightly annoying for our opponent. As they've been put on a five turn clock and that guy's a flyer, so not the easiest to block. So we're thinking they'll probably uh, put some removal onto it, which kind of sucks that it's a uh, removal on a one, one, but it's not just a one, one, right? It's a one, one. And in addition, it's a minus two ability from a planeswalker. A so they take out Tezzeret instead of uh, the bird. Okay, well, perhaps they have a plan for the bird coming up soon. Um, I think I'll play Reality Chip and get a draw, actually. I was considering going Moonsnare Prototype and Reality Chip, but I think I'd rather get another card out of Bankbuster here. 
Um, this is something I don't like about Magic Arena. It's pretty obvious that our opponent has an instant or sorcery or some sort of... Oh, okay. Well, if I wasn't sitting here lagging, as we can see, waiting for a server, great. We love that. Okay, the lag is over. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, okay. That was weird. Um, and I miscalculated my mana, so sorry for the people who think I'm a big freaking idiot. Great. We got to draw out of that. Um, I think I'll play the Moonsnare prototype. That'll bring the cost of Reality Heist down to the lowest it can be. And assuming our things leave, we get a nice cheap Reality Heist. And since most of our artifacts cost one or two, we'll probably be able to play them. Okay. Opponent gets a nice Wandering Emperor. Surely they will exile Silver Raven. I think we're going to play Otawara here. Oh my goodness, we have all, all of our artifacts, except Mech Titan Core, of course. Got all of our artifacts here, so let's see. We'll take a Reckoner Bankbuster for extra drawing. And hmm, do I take a reality chip as an insurance policy against hours getting removed or an automated artificer? I think an automated artificer. And I'm further thinking that we'll play them both here. All right. Now, we have no cards in hand. However, we have two Reckoner Bankbusters and a um, reality chip here that's about to be reconfigured. So we are going to have access to more cards in this island, most likely. Let's see. Okay, we drew an island. Um, I think now we will... Uh, Let's start drawing with the Bankbuster, because I really need to see a creature. This is a, it's a little rough here. Okay. Um, we're not going to tap the Reality Chip to a Moonsnare prototype, because um, our opponent can exile it with the uh, Wandering Emperor. And it's kind of our uh, last hope here to get a bunch of cards. Um... I think I screwed up a little bit there. Um, we'll pass the turn. Because, I mean, what else can we do? Take a look at all these manas. We, we're getting flooded a little bit. Now, uh, something very mildly interesting is um, if we can activate this Reckoner Bankbuster here, taking the last um, counter off of it, then at that point, we'll create a treasure token and a 1-1 one, one colorless pilot creature token. So we should be able to reconfigure reality chip onto that little token there. It's going to be quite expensive, calling, costing us a 4 and an island in total. But I suppose it's better than just keeling over and dying. So we're going to give it a shot. Um, I can actually tap reality chip for a Moonsnare prototype, because once it's um, configured onto that pilot token, it will not be a creature. Although, of course, if our opponent can destroy that pilot token, then it will be a creature again. And this. Tap that guy. This is going to create the pilot token that we will then reconfigure onto. And we're going to... The reason that we didn't play a mana yet is so that we could uh, take the mana off the top right there. Um, that's pretty good. Do 
Do any of these things have death touch? Because I'm considering throwing a uh, Reckoner Bankbuster at them. I'm thinking of crewing the Bankbuster with the pilot token here, the untapped one, and then throwing it at Wandering Emperor. And I'm definitely going to pressure them to block with that. Um, they, of course, can't block with the Decayed token. I'm thinking we play Reality Heist. On our turn, we're definitely taking uh, that Max Titan core. Um, goodness gracious. Guess I'll take another Reckoner, perhaps? Might be nice to have some pretty wild card advantage. Let's see. We're going to play Mech Titan Core to maximize our chances of actually getting it next turn. I'm going to crew the Bank Buster and go after uh, the Emperor. And hopefully we will elicit the block from their 3-3 token before it's powerful enough to trade with Bank Buster. So that's nice. Nice little kill there. And now our opponent does have access to... Um, the Wandering Emperor's minus two ability, but I mean, they get to choose between Network Disruptor and a Pilot Token, so I mean, you know, you enjoy that. Pilot Token, good choice, of course, because it unconfigures Reality Chip. However, we've got this guy ready already, so perhaps it's too late. Perhaps they have a contingency. Okay, that's good. They've gotten rid of one thing already so far. Make it another. This is why we like having a bunch of bank busters out. My judgment is fine. Our opponent's obviously keeping that open to block with. Oh boy. I don't know if they're going to be the most happy person in the universe. Okay, we have a total of four, five, six, seven, eight mana to play with here. We need to cast one, two. We need two more artifact creatures. Six more mana. Oh dear. They just weren't going to have it. They couldn't handle the Mech Titan. Wandering Emperor, of course, can't handle the Mech Titan. Vigilance means it doesn't tap to attack. Good game, opponent. We didn't necessarily have that that turn. I'm not convinced we would have had enough mana to actually uh, activate Mech Titan. But, as I stated in the beginning... We need a constant stream of victories and affirming um, experiences because we have an extremely fragile ego and we're very insecure. So anything that makes us feel better, whether we earned it or not, is much appreciated. GG once again to the opponent. I like that little avatar. It reminds me of Mike Wazowski from My Monsters, Inc. The little lime green guy with the one eye like that. Okay, we'll open up Silver Raven. I guess we'll keep things like an island on the top or a... Um, I don't think we're going to keep that one. Okay, that is pretty good. The Automated Artificer um, would enable us to get a... Uh, if we get an island next turn, we could play and activate a Bank Buster, but I think I want to um, have the greatest chance of actually getting the second card. As I've had games before where I get a little greedy, I play the Automated Artificer when I only have two islands, hoping to have a Reckoner, Bank Buster, and draw in the next turn, and no island. We get it this time. I think I'm just going to play Artificer and pass. I don't think he's going to attack with that, but... I mean, creatures are so value to me, valuable to me because they um, build into Mech Titan. 
a lot of times I just don't want to get rid of them because it means another card that I have to draw, pay to draw and then pay to cast. And then that takes away from activating the Mech Titan. And the deck really takes long enough to um, actually, you know, activate, so. Okay. We're getting a bunch of mana. It's not bad. Um, I think we'll play that. That reduces the cost of reality highs to its minimum. And we'll just pass. I'm going to be a little bit of a um, of a scaredy cat here and not attack with my Silver Raven. I feel like maybe in the interest of asserting dominance I should, but I, I just don't want them to take the risk and block it. Okay, the good news is it looks like we're on maybe a three turn clock instead of a two. Hopefully they can't swing for lethal next turn. Um, and one of these reality heists that we're about to play can get us, uh, you know, our, our lovely mech titan. At least one mech titan. You know, they're running black and red. I wonder if they have removal. Hmm. That is right. You read it. You weep. That is a beautiful mech titan there. And that is another one. And we hope, we pray, that they survive. Um, we're going to keep Silver Raver Oven just in case we need an emergency blocker since we can afford to block with one thing. Okay. As whenever you create a blood token. Okay. So if by combat they have five or more blood tokens, they can get two extra damage. Okay. Oh, how nice. how cute is that? Aw. That, that's a nice deck protector. I like that a lot. Very nice. Looks like our opponent's swinging for a whole entire six damage while very conspicuously having all of their mana and all of their blood and their treasure token open. So, um, we do not believe the coast is clear. Okay. As annoying as that is, they did just use two cards to do that, and we drew a Surge Hacker Mech, which is the best thing in my, one of the best things to build into Mech Titan Core. We have so many vehicles. We could take down a one, two, three, four. That would be our fifth vehicle, so that that's going to deal 10 damage. Goodness. Okay, so sacrifice, target creature gets sacked. You know what? I want to get rid of that guy. We're going to hope that we uh, survive the three damage. Because two damage is not difficult to, d to deal. I actually didn't read that part of the card. That's rough. We are uh, we're ending the turn. Put your hands together and pray that every single thing that can go right does. Our opponent has three cards in turn in hand, three chances to deal one damage to us. And it looks like they can. Looks like that's going to be a good game there. I'll let them go ahead and do it really quick. Oh, oops, my bad. Well, I have to pass in order for them to do it. And now they will use that ability, sacrifice an artifact, and game over. Very nice. Yeah, good game.
All right, Calbass 92. Very nice, sir. Well done. Those two removal spells, the Meat Hook uh, Massacre and which, whatever the red one was, turned out to be the uh, fatal blows he needed to secure his win. Very good, man. Omelet. Omelet using the uh, the Vivian Reed avatar. Cool man. Me too. My initial thought here is to um, next turn play Tezzeret, um, get the third mana using both Moonsnare prototypes, make Silver Raven a 4 4 with his minus 2 ability, and um, don't attack. I think that should um pressure some removal out of them. Okay, that's nice because we will not be attacked. Excellent. I think we can play reality chip and configure it because Tezzeret's ability, um, static ability will reduce the cost to one. Yep, look at that. Reconfigure for a single island. Beautiful. We like that. Oh, man. I don't think I'm going to play that bank buster, but I might draw into it here. Innovation has no limits. Oh, I didn't play. Oh, I didn't play the island. Oh. I'm such a great Magic the Gathering player. Oh man, what a what a freaking superstar. What a, what a genius. Oh, that's painful. All right, we're going to pass. If he wants to remove the Silver Raven, we're going to tap it to Crew Rick and Reckoner Bankbuster, and it'll hopefully keep Tezzeret a tiny bit more secure. That's pretty good. I guess that means that this guy's going to be a 5-5 five, five and he's going to swing at Tezzeret. He's going to kill Tezzeret, but fortunately we already have the reality chip configured, which is nice. I guess our opponent's debating between removal and that second wretched throng. Okay. I'm going to assume they have a removal spell ready to play. And I also didn't activate Reckoner Bankbuster to draw because once again I am the greatest Magic the Gathering player. Sorry about that. I'm going to use the ability to change the top card of our library. Our opponent is letting it be extremely obvious that they have some sort of instant in their hand. Right, I don't think that's an activated ability that's uh, slowing them down here. That's pretty cool, they're animated. Neato. Okay. We're not going to play the island yet. Let me go uh, patchwork. 
we might um, use Tesseret to minus on patchwork because it makes him a base 4-4. Four, four. So then you start him out at 4-4 four, four instead of 1-1 one, one, and then add counters on top of it. Um, that's kind of nice. I guess we'll scry the island away since we have one in our hand. It could just be another island, so, you know, probably the best move. Oh, look at that. The oracle has spoken. Ugh. I wonder if I should have made the Silver Raven a 4 4 so that I could go bashing this guy over his skull. Okay, he's going to get the Silver Raven and a zombie token. That's pretty darn good value. <laughs> and, yeah, the champion of the parish. Oh, man, okay, so this guy's got himself a little engine set up here. Um, boy, oh, boy. We can play that Mech Titan Core, which is super awesome good. We'll tap Patchwork. And here they have something nice to worry about. Um, I'm going to swing because it's not like we're going to get any value out of it as a blocker. Um, actually, we'll keep it as a blocker because it's going to prevent a lot of attacks. My story changed 180 degrees there in a second. But that's also kind of called analysis. They've got a 6-6. Six, six. Will they swing it at Tezzeret, or will they hit the face? Because that 6-6 six, six could put us on a three-turn clock here, sitting at 18. Okay. Um, is that just a zombie token? I'll just get rid of this guy, I suppose. We'll see if they have shenanigans. I doubt it. Oh, that was actually idiotic of me. Okay. I'm a poo-poo head. Well, hopefully Mech Titan saves the day, because I'm sure doing my absolute best to throw every bit of this game, huh? I think I could do something that's going to make our opponent angry. Might mean we're a turn late for Mech Titan. But at this very second, I might be okay with that. We're going to play Reckoner Bankbuster to increase our vehicle count, and then we're going Surge Hacker Mech for 8 on their Champion of the Perished. Um... I feel like that's going to be funny and um, good and stuff. Um, they'll get a creature out of it, but I mean, at least all that other freaking value is going to be lost a little. Oh, goodness gracious. Have we lost the game? I do wonder. I was hoping a better card would be underneath. Might as well have just played that guy then. Um, I guess we'll end the turn. And our opponent can deal tons of damage. I wonder if they can just win. Looks like right now they have a total of 11 damage if we block both of their um, four power creatures. Oh gosh. Okay, they have decayed. Do decayed creatures have haste? 
We shall see. Okay. Oh, thank goodness. I see the summoning sickness there. Oh, they are keeping up whatever for Mech Titan. They know. Good. Good. And we're definitely building Surge Hacker Mech into Mech Titan because if they mess it up, then he comes back in and uh, messes up one of their guys. Actually, we'll put Silver Raven into it also. Okay, most importantly, Surge Hacker Mech, so if they destroy it, we get to kill something when it comes back. One, two, three, and Silver Raven for the little scry. Do I want to drop that guy? Mm, yeah. Do they have any shenanigans like flying? Because I don't think they do. I think we'll get rid of this guy if um, they can kill Mech Titan and Surge Hacker comes back in because the value they're getting out of that thing is um, is really annoying. Thankfully, there wasn't a zombie on top of their hand, but whatever, they got two nice cards anyway. Okay. I assume they're uh, up to some uh, to some silly buggers. I mean, we're obviously blocking, so let's see if they have some sort of um, death touch something. We'll block a zombie token without decayed because they have to sacrifice the decayed at end of turn. Okay, that feels a little desperate to me. That feels like what you do right before you either win or resign. Um, so, yeah. We're hitting them with the good game because they resigned instead of saying GG or just letting us attack, which is as easy as doing nothing and then hitting spacebar. Okay. Happy with that one. Played a uh, a deck that was at a pretty good difficulty. I would say right about the uh, level of strength of our deck. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. They were definitely generating some nice value out of that uh, little engine that they had. Um, and I don't think I have an engine like that, but you know, good game. It's nice when it's a uh, competitive like that instead of a blowout either way. I think we'll go the Moonsnare prototype into um, Silver Raven and Artificer. That should um, give us at least four mana turn three. Okay, well, that throws a wrench in things. There go, bye bye, Bankbuster. Ooh, Golgari, and they just uh, forecasted a card. Not gonna lie, that I'm not familiar enough to know uh, <laughs> which card they uh, forecasted. So, oh well. Um, Network disruptor. Ooh, what do I do with that? I don't know. I think I might put that at the bottom. Because we need other things to activate Mech Titan, at least in Artificer, since we don't have the mana. Um, I think I'll keep the mana open for our opponent's turn. Um, 
We'll attack for two and keep open what looks like it could be a counter spell or negate. Whatever. Okay, that's another forecasted card. I would assume that's a, uh, yep, end step. We'll play Reality Heist. You, you, you know there's only one way I can possibly tap the Moonsnare prototype. Why are you asking? Two automated artificers. Pretty nice there. Reality Chip is, of course, fantastic. Love seeing that. Reality Chip and Configure. And we can even play that island. Hey! Attack them with a whole entire two big fat damage. They're crying. We, of course, anticipate the wipe, and uh, our only condolences is that we'll have reality chip. Okay. Our opponent big brains us by uh, destroying that silver raven. Hopefully they don't have another... Um, kill spell for the reality chip, although, I mean, you know, we have one in our hand. Oh no, they did have it. Oh, whatever shall we do. Nice two for two trade there. I'm thinking I play Tezzeret, actually, so that next turn I can activate reality chip super, uh, super quick. I'll, uh, I guess I'll tap this guy. Nah, this one, just in case. Tesseract. Many consider my tactics cruel, but I get results. I think we'll draw. I think that is the most prudent at the moment. Is power. going on here. Destroy target non-land permanent. Bye-bye, no Tezzeret. You will be missed. Damn, that reality chip really gives us access to, like, Cards and cards and cards, man. Attack for once again a uh, a whole entire one damage, and leave reality ice to be uh, activated on their turn. It's always nice when you can leave a little mana open to have your opponent wonder, especially if it's like you know blue. I guess anything really. Maybe green's the least intimidating to have open on your opponent's turn, but I have had people cast some nice fight spells on me. Okay, Junji's pretty good. I think he can take a creature from any graveyard onto his battlefield. So let's see if he has any nice guys. Non-dragon creature. Um, is this... Oh, the artifacts aren't creatures until they become them, right? Okay, is reality chip? Okay, he could probably take reality chip, but not configure it without blue mana. Um, I guess we'll just do... <laughs> okay. Whatever. Hey. There's, uh, there's that guy. All right, you're more than welcome to block with Junji and I'll discard both of my cards if you'd like. I don't really want to. Surge Hacker mech is good, but... Okay, our opponent takes the damage, indicating something afoot.
Oh, I didn't realize he had menace. I was thinking I could just block him. Ooh, and see, this is where Surge Hacker Mech might have been nice. It would be coming in and killing his guy there. Nice Silver Raven. I think we'll put that on the bottom because we need another Mech Titan most likely here. We can totally kill Junji though since we'll have um, three total vehicles when Surge Hacker enters the field. That's pretty cool and I don't think we have any really good monsters for them to take. Does their graveyard have anything good? Yeah. No. Um, I guess we'll just do Mech Titan and um, watch them resign without saying good game. Okay, you sit there while I manually tap everything. Okay, you have two swamps open. I'm gonna assume maybe you have that uh, forecasted spell from earlier out. We obviously have to assume that. Three, four there. Can only assume that this guy's going to get killed on sight. Well, there we go. I'd like to thank our opponent for putting all that effort into playing their game and none of that effort into being sportsman-like in that game. So, nice sarcastic lack of appreciation there for their sportsmanship skills as we begin our next game against Blurry. I'm thinking Silver Raven first into patchwork. I'm thinking don't get greedy for patchwork this time. Silver Raven, it's really nice to scry that top card. Like if it's another reality heist or even a surge hacker, I'll probably throw it to the bottom. Keep an island, you know. Yep. Hello. Oh. Hey. All right. Oh, the, those colors look like a lot like Templar Assassin from um, Dota. One of the other games they play. Templar Assassin's got a beautiful uh, color palette and design. Um, we're not going to attack because I do not know how much our opponent values their creatures, but I do know that I do value mine quite a bit. Okay, it's possible that we're fighting. Yeah, Demir Rogues there. Um, okay. Oh, that's the, uh, oh, okay, that's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, mentor. That's pretty cool. Um, we're going to cast a uh, disrupt or Disruptor of our own, I suppose. Oh, yeah, and a Bank Buster. You want to hit for two? I'll hit for, I'll hit for four. Okay, combat phase with mana open tells me ninjutsu is coming. Doesn't this reduce the cost of ninjutsu? Yeah, yeah, this guy's pretty cool. I like that card. Nashi Moon Sage. It does something. Oh, that's pretty cool. And you can pay life instead of mana. That's awesome. What they get? They got my. They got my reality chip. Ugh. You little worm, how dare you. I think that's going to be reality heist on our turn. For the possibility of a... Uh, uh, well, that's good. And that's good. Because I'd like to power up Patchwork to a nice 4-4. Four, four. Um... You know what? I'll tap the reality chip. I'll allow them to block with silver fur if they so choose. And I mean, we're going to highly doubt that. Should have crewed the bank buster there, but you know, not playing the best today. And um, I'd just like to illustrate that this game, um, 
I don't have Mech Titan Core activated, get our opponents down to eight, and it's largely thanks to Patchwork Automaton um, and his um, capacity to get big. Um, obviously, it's not huge now, but I mean, he's been big enough to swing through and be threatening. So that's why I like having Patchwork, because otherwise I really wouldn't have that much that's um, threatening on its own, so much as threatening as part of an intricate combo that I, you know, get off in a certain percentage of games. Okay, we're down to four. That hurts. Um, but our opponent only has one blocker. Three mana, though. So we'll see what we're doing here. They cannot use the channel ability on that. That's nice, because that would be great to throw on really anything here. I think the best turn might be to engage in a uh, standoff, just play reality ch reality chip and a uh, mech titan core, um, and keep everyone open to block. Exile uh, that. Oh shoot! So that's some serious bid now. Everyone has only one flyer at the moment. Hopefully we keep ours. As we beef up our side of the field as much as we can. And the goal of surviving to play Mech Titan. That's our turn. We've got four blockers for his five creatures. He does have to be careful because we have the biggest guy on the field. Okay, now we can't even afford to take three damage. Now we can't afford to take two damage, and I think that's the lowest uh, creature he has, so I think that should be a good game if he just attacks with everything, right? What? What? Oh my god, we're in our opponent's head. He, he, am I wrong? Am I wrong if our opponent had just attacked with everything? We have four blockers, he has five attackers, so... and. The minimum power there is two, right? So no matter what, he would have just won. Does he have like... Okay, that was just a poor play. Fair enough, I've made my own today. We're going to get rid of everything except Patchwork. We're going to check real fast for Death Touch again. I wasn't actually looking. Oh yeah, we're totally attacking with both. I guess, unless they have a great card in their hand, they can only block um, two of that 10 damage. Oh, poor guy. I feel like this is a bit of a hollow victory because I, um, you know, I like to beat opponents um, playing their best, and I don't like to beat opponents just because they screwed up and we got lucky. Guy said nice, though. I feel bad. I feel like he may have been a little intimidated by our stuff because, I mean, that was that was pretty obvious that he had five attackers and we had four blockers. Poor guy. And that is the importance of a psychological battle and intimidating the opponent. See, our opponent had it won. That was their game. I still consider it their game, even though technically we did win because they had us beat. It's just that somehow, some way, like either me or my board state was in their head. They didn't think that they could do anything, even though they had it. And we wound up winning, even though they had everything. And that's the point of propaganda is to convince the, uh, the lowly peasants that they don't stand a chance against the elites, even though we do. What's that, what's that quote from a, a Bug's Life? About how their way of life is uh, only predicated on selling the lie to the bugs, and if the little bugs find out, then they would, uh, they would smush the bigger bugs instantly? Yep. It's a skill to try to not let intimidation get to your head and instead rationally think it out, because intimidation is irrational, playing on fear, which is irrational. It's tough to be rational. It's a skill.
especially with adrenaline, fear. That's me waxing poetic, waxing philosophical without a single brain cell in my head. Okay, um, I think this is a nice uh, opportunity to go patchwork into Silver Raven. No, I can't do that, so just patchwork. Okay, that is good. But that will give us the biggest guy on the field next turn. We're, placing light, we're playing life gain, which is really annoying because this is uh, unranked, so we assume we're going to lose. But if we uh, do um, succeed in any capacity in this game, we are definitely going to make sure to remind our opponent that it was a good game. I was considering playing Silver Raven, but I think I'll just tap out for all my mana. So that next turn, I don't have to spend two. Um, I don't think there's... Um, maybe I should have not attacked with that since they gained so much life. And I should have just defended my own life total, but whatever. Hopefully, if I keep making that mistake enough, I'll eventually learn. What do we think? Do we think I'll ever learn? Let me know in the comments. Tell me how. Tell me how much or little you you uh, have confidence in my ability to uh, to make better decisions when it comes to defending my life total versus attacking my opponents. It's kind of a difficult. Um, it's kind of a difficult decision to make every time. Um, I guess Silver Raven into Reality Heist. Um. I guess we'll put that on the bottom because we can't draw it with Reality Heist, so we might as well uh, get rid of a non-artifact card in the upcoming uh, pool of seven cards we'll get. Okay, Bankbuster and Reality Chip. Not the um, Mech Titan Core, but a whole bunch of useful um, card stuff there. Tap this, tap this. We'll play the Reality Chip. Next turn we'll configure it and... Um, no, we don't have enough to play that. I guess that's... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm going to leave my guys untapped. So if you uh, if you thought that I wouldn't learn, then um, you're mistaken because obviously I just learned. I kept my uh, five toughness and four toughness uh, blockers. Okay, we still have the biggest guy on the field, so unless they can uh, gain life with another creature. Beautiful. Okay, very nice. We're going to have a pretty big patchwork automaton now that we have um, the reality chip about to be configured here. Hmm. I think I'll play the Moon Snare prototype because I can play that and then Mech Titan Core with the mana it produces. That's a uh, kind of nice. Do that really fast. Mech Titan Core, another counter on that guy. Oh, we're swinging for the whole entire one damage. That's right. You take that. It's not for the one damage. It's for the signaling that we're here, we're attacking, we're not lying down, we're not giving up, we're not scared. Venture into other creatures get plus one as long as you've completed a dungeon. Okay, cool. So that'll take a uh, that'll take a uh, minute, as the uh, kids say. Of course, that's a stupid thing to say, as most of them are. You'll realize within a uh, six months to a year that you sounded like an idiot for that time period, but by then you'll already be saying the next stupid thing. If you do use, um, you know, pop language like that.
no cap. God, I can't wait for that one to be old and done and killed off, because then I'm going to start using it, and then people are going to tell me I sound like an idiot, and I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah, do, do, you, do you, are you making the connection there? Yeah, I do. Um, okay. Nobody has reach or anything. That's pretty cool. Um, okay. We'll just, uh, network disruptor there. Tap that guy. Oh, shh. Poopoos. I gave him a card. That's not a good idea, always. Um, however, that does open up the ability to block, to attack with Patchwork Automaton, because, um, he's gonna have to block with a whole bunch of stuff. He could have just blocked with that and, like, you know, anything that he didn't really care about like that. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I can also play this. I'm going to. We're gonna make Patchwork a 9-9, nine, nine, make it even more difficult to kill. That's 20 damage, but um, Mech Titan with Vigilance and Lifelink is going to be pretty awesome because he can gain us um, 20 life between our turn and our opponent's turn, attacking and blocking. In addition to dealing um, the 10 damage, of course. So over the course of us attacking our opponent, doing whatever, and then back to our turn, it'll actually swing the life a total of 30 points since we would gain 20 and they'd... Um, lose 10. So I mean it's quite powerful that it has Vigilance and Lifelink. Okay, that's a 9-9. Nine, nine. Can they get it the last counter? Does it really even matter? Um, okay. You're gonna have to block with more than that to kill our guy. Yep. More than that. Yep, and more than that. Yep. And more than that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. May attack. Okay, we we like taking care of Luminarch as Aspirant. Yeah, I'll take that one all day. We deal a whole entire 11 damage, which I shouldn't be sarcastic about because that's highly considerable. And there it is, the last card in their hand. And I guess they're going to kill um, Mech Titan Core, which is a pretty awesome play. Right, because it has a, ca a cost of zero there. I'd assume Mech Titan's screwed, but uh, we'll just get him back and we have tons of life, so... I guess they'll just resign. And that is, um, I often talk about Network Disruptor coming in and tapping one of their guys. I really like that because it, it's not important right now. It's not going to make or break the game, but that did prevent us from taking uh, at least nine damage. Possibly more now that they could have put a um, counter onto it, of course. Hey, our opponent is definitely gaining a whole bunch of life. However, we do have the capacity... Oh, dear. Gosh. Okay, they're gaining too much life. I'm starting to think this might not be our game. We'll play Tezzeret and then do Mech Titan. Plus three. Me is choosing death. How foolish of you. Um, one, two, 
Or we'll build the other mech titan into it to protect it from removal. Not that that's so incredibly super necessary. It's gonna make it a little um a little more pressure on our opponent there, since we're swinging for fourteen. And try our best not to um give our opponent more triggers from um this card because I think I helped them salvage their game for a few turns by giving them the extra cards targeting their creatures with abilities kind of resent that that's a great card man great card and for three mana two all that value it's generating on a body that doesn't entirely suck for three mana it's pretty awesome okay that does take away our patchwork however his um he was getting chump blocked, so I mean. Yeah. That does not have a life link, so that's good. Um, we're definitely gonna tap that for the free activation. Um, and then tap that. Um, actually, no, I can't really tap that. Can I? Not without tapping Mech Titan. Um, I guess I can do that. I guess they said good game. Say good game back. Alright. We like this guy. That was a good game, man. Damn. He's got a good deck. I like it. It's not ridiculously powerful, but it generates some value, and it, it is definitely capable of putting big things on the field and killing people. I liked facing that guy's deck. That was a good game, man. Good stuff. Okay, I just took a look at my um at my little OBS streamy thingy. And I uh, noticed that I've been um, playing now for an hour and two minutes-ish. So um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, we got uh, we got five victories there. Look at that. Obviously, we were playing unranked, but I mean, let's be real. Um, do, you, do we want to go into ranked and just get beaten over the head repeatedly all the time? As nice as it is to learn how to pilot it against new decks, I would... Huh. That's pretty interesting if Slesnia went for a lot more uh, sagas. I don't have too many in my Slesnia enchantments besides what Michiko's. Um, okay, is that a mastery orb? Whatever, I don't need to do that now. What the hell? Okay, so um, that was another episode of Mono Blue Mech Titan. Um, we got to see the uh, power of Surge Hacker Mech coming into the field with a whole bunch of vehicles out. And actually, I think I um I think I played a vehicle before I played Surge Hacker Mech so that it would be able to take out a huge creature. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a big fat zombie at like nine eight nine nine or something. Damn. So uh, Surge Hacker Mech definitely uh definitely doing work today. Definitely showing me why I want more of him. Um. I don't really have many more comments beyond that. So, um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for stopping by the channel. If you liked what you, uh, if you liked what you saw today, what you witnessed, I would, um, much appreciate a like, I'd like a comment telling me what you liked, what you'd, what you'd like to see more of, you know, um, any comment on any match, that'd be freaking fantastic. I would love that, man. A subscribe lets me know that you don't, you don't just come here, see this stuff and say, oh man, this guy's whack. He freaking sucks. Bye. You know, tells me that you uh, like what you see. Maybe you'd like to see more. So, uh, anything you could do to help support the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. And, uh, as we say, take care of yourselves and each other. A uh, quote from Jerry Springer. And, uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you next time with some more Mono Blue Mech Titan. Have a good one.